Hey guys, um, Jose, uh, this is tutorial number 12, um, and this will be the example number 2. Basically, we're going to try to put together everything that we've seen so far, right? Um, so I'm going to start from the script we left off uh, on script um, tutorial number 11, which is the tang tangents of this line. And we're going to just bring it, make it work together with the concept of connecting lines between two curves, right? So the first thing we're going to do is just copy this curve. So we're going to have two curves. And I'm going to just also move a little bit the, the contra points. We have something slightly more interesting, right? So we have that, perfect. Um, and we're going to go to the end of the script, and we are going to say, basically we're going to copy the whole thing here, just line by line. Um, so we're going to say curve 2, fit curve 1, fit curve 2, and we're going to generate another instance of the class object 2, that it will be the same class, but it will work for curve 2, and object 2 is time points, right? So we're going to, at this point, the only thing we have is just that same thing happening twice, right? Uh, and do. And we're going to see um, how to get more information out of this class. Um, what we haven't seen really is just how to basically make functions that return some value, right? Um, what if we want to call this function and obtain, like as a returning uh, value of the function, let's say get the points or get the normal points or the tangent points. Um, so we're going to see how to do that. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make an empty list uh, that is going to be called points list equals empty list, right? And then a second one that is going to be a time point list. And this also is going to be an empty list. Um, so when we go into the loop, when we're adding these points here, we're going to say point list dot append. So we're going to add to the list the point that we're drawing, right? Uh, at the same time, we're going to say time point list dot append, and which is the value that we want here, time point, right? So we're going to append that. Uh, so we're basically starting with an empty list, and each time we go through the loop, we are adding that element to the list. Right. Uh, the next step would be just going out of this for loop. You have to check that they are kind of working outside the uh, the indentation. So this is outside. We finish the loop, and now outside the loop, we want to tell the function to return. Right. So we're going to use this word return. This will make the function to finish, and, and will just give us. Um, Something right, it will return a value for us. Uh, what I'm going to do here is going to return a list that contains both the point list and the time point list. I'm doing this uh, on purpose to actually introduce the idea of nested lists, right? Because the first element of this list is a list of points. The second element of this list uh, is a set of points as well, right? So I want us to be able to deal with this kind of information and, and, and return um, a, quite a complex uh, nested list here, and we will see how to work with that, right? Uh, so far, the return function is not doing much. It's the return function from these ten points. Let's see if we are having everything correct still. It seems fine, right? 
So having this return function, now we know that this function time points returns a value. So we're going to say data01 equals this function. So this means that as this function returns something, we can assign that returning value to this variable called data01. And we're going to say, say the same thing with data02. Right? So we are getting the data uh, of both the points and the tangent points. Uh, if we want to be more specific and clear about this, we can say something like the following. We can say uh, point list 01 is the data 01 element 0. Right? Because we know that data 01 is a list of both the points and the time points, if I want a list of only the points, again, I'll do this, right? I'm going to say the element 0, so just the list of points of this element data. And I'm going to separate, so I can do a little comment here, this is point list of first line. Right, so I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to say point list so 02 is the basically the element 1, so the second element of the data 1. So this will be the time points of first line. Right? Um, the thing that we'll do next is just copy this same thing for the data 2, right? And we're going to do point list 4 for the data 2 as well. So data 2 also contains element 0 and element 1, right? So point list of second line, and this would be again point list 4 is the tan point of second line, right? So we're getting the points of the first line, the tangent points of the first line, the tangent points of the, first, the, the second line, and the points of the second line. So that's uh, all the information that we need now to actually draw uh, curves between those two lines. So we're going to do that with a for loop. We're going to say for i in, we can use any of this because all the all of them contain the same number of elements. And we're going to say for i in point list 1, um, basically, how does the command um, curve work in Rhino? Let's, let's look at that, right? Rhino.add curve. And it's asking me for the points. If we just type here in the help file, add curve. Uh, it's asking me for a list of 3D points, right? So this is the only required um, field that is a list of 3D points. So I'm going to say the list will be called something like points for curve, right? So we need to provide this list. Points for curve equals a list of what? What do we want to put inside here? Well, we want to put, um, as we're looking through this list of points, we want to provide um, first a point, so we're going to say point list and element 0, right? We want to say the element i, but i here doesn't represent the number, so we're going to do a counter, as we've done it before as well, that starts in 0, and each time we do this operation, we are going to increment that counter with 1. So after this, we're going to say count plus equals 1, right? Um, so we want to connect the, the point list of 1, comma, 
with the let's try it for instance point list with the list of three right so we are putting the um, just two elements in this list the beginning point um, in the point from the first curve and the point of the second curve let's see uh, if we are getting any errors so far we get that right we get that right and we get straight lines between the points right and the thing is that because we are using just two points the point in one of the curves and the point on the other curve we are just getting a, a line so here in this list of points, because it's a curve, we could actually specify more points. So let's bring in the tangent point uh, and also count here. This is the index of the value of the of the points we will be working with, right? Um, as we're looking for, like, let's let's see this one. Uh, let's try it when we have it on screen. We're gonna bring in. the tangent point now of the other list. So basically we're providing four points, right? Let's run this and let's see on screen. So what are we having here? We have a, a set of curves. Each one of them if we turn points on or actually if we turn the point yeah that's what we have uh, actually we have an error here we can see that this curve has the tangent point on the tangency of our curve but over here it's not actually using it Right? It's not using the tangency of the other side. So let's check what is actually happening. So point list of three. Right, we are repeating the point list of three um, twice. So what we need here is point list, point list of four. And we're gonna run this again. There we go. And we're going to see that if we turn on the control points, we have the control points being the tangents and the points themselves being the points on the curve. What we're doing basically is providing four points like this and doing a curve, right? The curve starting in the point, then using the tangent, then using the second tangent, that's the next one in the, in, in the order, and then the point again. So this is the kind of curve we're using, right? It's, um, so we're using four points to describe it, and those points are the tangents of our curve. So if it's confusing, that's why we wrote all these comments here, because we're using first the point of the first curve, second the tangent of the first curve, then the tangent of the second curve, and then the tangent in mean the point of the second curve. And we're using a uh, command uh, to build a curve between, between those. So let's do something extra here. Let's do curve equals uh, rhino dot add curve, so we have that curve as a variable, and we can also say something like rhino dot object layer, right? So we're gonna assign a layer for that um, object. So we're gonna see here here this. So our curve will go into layer four, right? This is a command from Rhino that allows us to assign a specific element that we're creating to a specific layer. Um, so let's 
and undoing right am i doing this stuff then I just follow the script again and you can see you probably don't see my layer stack but I, that's another layer with another color um, the only more one more thing that we're gonna add to this script um, is give a little bit of flexibility like right now how strong this content is is based on a value like that is quite um, uh, arbitrary by us, right? It's three. So what if we say, what if we ask um, this function to provide the strength of that tangent um, uh, scale? So let's put this strength here, right? If we try to run this, we will run into an error because this now it's a value that needs to be provided in order for this function to work. So when we call the function tangent points, we need to provide the value, in this case, let's say something like 8. That is much stronger. Uh, and we could see what is the result of that. We can see that the tangents already are much stronger. So the effect of the script stronger as well. Let's see what would happen if we put a negative value here. We're going to put minus 8 and we're going to see completely different effect now. Basically we inverted the directionality of the tangent. Um, with the, um, the value of minus 8 and we produce this sequence of lines uh, all following the tangency of the curve. So this, this is a quite a interesting script that we, we developed uh, together with Canute Bernier uh, for the probiotics work in DRL um, and you can keep exploring what if we put one negative, one positive and different kind of versions of this um, and we'll, uh, you can actually start seeing how to how to add different kind of um, lofts and surfaces and, and different kind of geometry out of this. But this we're gonna leave it uh, like this uh, in this tutorial. So I'll see you in the next one.